Have you been feeling confused about the circumstances in your life? Do you feel as if everything is always falling apart and as if God is angry with you? Or are you wondering if the, the devil is bringing an onslaught of turmoil against you? Well, it may be that God in his love is taking you through the fire in order to purify you to bear even greater fruits of holiness so that he may be glorified in your sanctification. Friends, in this video, I'm going to offer you some spiritual insight from the scriptures so that you can walk freely in joy and love. So no matter what season you're in, if you're ready for this, let's hop into it. Welcome to Never Forget the Blood's Worldwide Bloodcast. I'm Brother Barry, and we're here on YouTube offering you freedom from religious bondage by reminding you of the simple gospel. If this video is a blessing for you, then please go ahead and let us know in the comments below and ring that bell to get notified when we release more content like this. Friends, if you are facing what appears to be fiery trials in your life, and, and have been looking for answers, I want you to know that God has the answers you need in His Word. And by the Holy Spirit working in your heart through an honest and intimate relationship with Jesus, you will be able to see these circumstances more clearly. Now, you, you might not get every detail figured out, but God will teach you to trust Him the Lord will assure you of His love and care for you. And really, that's ultimately what He desires of you. Your trust in Him. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search it out. This is the beauty of, of God's relationship with man. But until you can learn to truly trust God as your true Father, you're not going to be able to walk in absolute freedom. See, the wisdom of Proverbs instructs us that with all our getting, to get understanding. But first, you'll need to come to the place where it's okay to not fully understand every reason of His sovereign decrees. Because if you did, you, 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 if you truly understood everything that God had, you wouldn't have a need to trust Him as God. And then that's the ancient temptation, right? That if, if you eat of this fruit of secret knowledge, then you'll be like God yourself and you won't need Him as your God? Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom, and the beginning of understanding. I want you to know today that, that you can faithfully rest in blessed assurance that you can always trust that He will always guide you into all truth and will provide for you everything that you need when you need it. If He gave up His own Son for us, how much more freely shall He not freely give us all things? Friends, in this video, I want to, to just take a moment and uh, to peer in at the glories of understanding God's sovereignty in your facing temptation. So let's begin with the wisdom of God from His Apostle James, the brother of the Lord. James tells us, Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither does he tempt any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Let's say that again. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When the lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. When we come to Christ and are born again, we do have new desires issuing from a new heart the new heart that God has given us. And some of us are delivered from things immediately, and others will go through seasons in the furnace of affliction. And this affliction is not meant to punish us, as in the sense of, of casting us off, but to bring the remaining impurities to the surface so that we may be further sanctified and brought even more near to 
the image of Christ. This is what Paul meant when he said all things work together for good. Because friends, the discipline of the Lord is not pleasant when it's being administered. And it's not pleasant because it is necessary. If there was no pain in discipline, then it would not be needed. When the branch is pruned, it, it means that something is cut off. Something has to die. If there is a, a, a cancerous tumor discovered, surgery is required. And yet so often we neglect our access to the anesthesia available in the Holy Spirit because Satan has kept us in bondage to lies and distorted our understanding of God's love for us. We don't see the necessity of pain, but love, real love, often hurts in order to heal. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, the scripture says, rather than the deceitful kisses of an enemy, and that open rebuke is better than secret love. If you are not being disciplined by the Lord, you are a bastard and you are not his. The reason you are facing these fiery trials in your life is because God is working in your life. Are you driven by indwelling sin? Friend, we have to remember that while we are in this world, we will be continually being sanctified until we see the Lord at his return and are changed in the twinkling of an eye. When we came to Christ, we were not perfected. Even the Apostle Paul, penning two-thirds of the New Testament, declared that he was not even perfected yet. But he was pressing on to the higher calling of the Lord. Now, we are undoubtedly and fully eternally justified and nothing shall separate us from God's love. And because of the blood of Jesus shed on our behalf through faith, we are legally considered perfect in the eyes of the Father. But we see the manifestation of that perfecting being worked out over time through the person and work of the Holy Spirit. You see, God is, exists outside of time. He created time and space. So His view of us is higher than ours. He's, he knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning because He created the end and the beginning. Because of the blood of Jesus, He sees us legally perfect because we are His workmanship. Within the span of time and space, He is working His glory and perfection in us and working these impure things out of us. So, so many of us are, are driven by our sins and lusts and we find ourselves falling into temptations not because God is tempting us, but because we have deeper problems that must be dealt with. You know, it's like a woman that, that has a, a cycling pattern in her life of getting into abusive relationships over and over again. You know, one reason for that may be because she might have some codependency issues that have taken such deep root in her that she really believes, even if not cognitively, she really believes that she needs a man to fill her emptiness. So she hears the sweet whispers of another fallen sinner and she becomes convinced that she cannot live her life without him. But the reality is, no matter what trauma happened in her past to sow this deficit in her, no man is going to fill that except the man, Jesus Christ. Another instance would be, would be like a, a man who had an absent father in his early formative years. His dad might have either been physically or, or emotionally absent. And, and so because of that, he doesn't know how to be a real man himself and he's been searching his whole life for someone else to fill that emptiness. He might seek that fulfillment in, in addictive vices or career pursuits, but they never fulfill him truly because they weren't ever meant to. And very often, he would become the broken man that the broken woman is attracted to, and he sees in her something that he can easily control because he feels so out of control within himself. And she is so willing to give herself over to someone who can guide her because she feels so lost within herself. However, no matter what lesser things or, or persons this man seeks to make himself feel fulfilled, nothing or no one is going to 
really make him feel like a real man unless he comes to intimately knowing his heavenly Father. Fatherlessness is the greatest deficit on our nation and working in our world today. But friends, I'm telling you these things because God wants you to be healed and God has already made provision for you. You see, because Jesus died and rose again, we have full access to boldly and unashamedly approach the throne of grace and find that very present help in our time of desperate need. Although many of us are not so willing to admit and confess how truly desperate we truly are. So maybe you might need to start there. Just realize how desperate you are. But the thing is, we, we have not approached the mountains scorching with smoke, where even if an animal came near, it would die immediately. But we have been invited and brought near to Mount Zion, to the real Eden to the shepherd's delectable mountains, to the throne surrounded in the full spectrum of light with the river of life flowing from its midst into the tree of life whose leaves hold the healing of nations. No matter how hurt you've been by others, no matter how much you've hurt other people, friends, there is grace and mercy for you. Jesus bids you come, just to come. And all that you are required to do is surrender and submit to His love and trust Him. The reason you find yourself so often tempted and ensnared like the dog returning to his vomit is because you have a deeper need that must be fulfilled by the love of God. And this emptiness has been, ha, has been temporarily filled with a root of lust, which is causing all these, these outward fruits of sins in your life. When I say lust, I'm not just talking about sexual fantasy, but I, I, I'm talking about what the, the Bible says, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the, the boastful pride of life. It's the insatiable desire to be somebody. But what you've got to realize, what you need to realize is that you don't have to try and be somebody because in Christ you already are somebody. Again, God ultimately wants us to simply trust Him. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. That's what it means to go from faith to faith and from glory to glory to ever-increasing glory. The next level you ought to be seeking is the next step, the deeper trusting of God. You'll see this in the life journey of Abraham. And, you know, I might make another video on that. But, uh, you know, see, God called him away from everything he knew to follow him. And God didn't unfold everything to Abraham in the beginning, but God wanted Abraham to enjoy the journey of fellowship, to walk by faith and not by sight. And you'll see that Abraham didn't fully trust God in the beginning. He made a lot of mistakes and blunders along the way, but he grew in his understanding and he learned how to trust God. And it took decades until he was finally able to utter the words in full assurance, Jehovah Jireh. And so it will be with you in your own walk with God. He wants you to trust Him with every aspect of your life. And much of the pruning and fiery trials that you face and the, the things that come upon you will bring you closer to that, will bring you closer to faith in Him, if you are His. Well, friends, thank you for joining me in this video. And if you want to get more encouragement in your faith, then uh, get, click one of these suggested videos that are about to pop up on your screen. And you know, just until next time, see to it that no man steal thy crown and never forget the blood.